Hello guys, it's Super Neo here, and you know, today is another one of them lore videos that I have promised in the past. And today's topic, as you can tell by the thumbnail and also by the title, is on one shot. Basically, while this game is a mag magnificent masterpiece in its own right, it still has like a lot of complex lore and a lot of hidden messages in it that really makes it warranted of a video. And what makes me surprised is people have not really done anything like this for one shot, despite the fact that it has a pretty vast lore, which is, which is given to us in pieces of course, like you know, Yoshi's and stuff like that. But yeah. It's a shame that like nobody talks about this, but regardless, it's just a shame that it's such a magnificent game, even despite the fact that popular people have covered it, such as like Markiplier, still it's a shame that people don't really talk about this and this game doesn't really come into conversation for like best puzzle games and shit, but you know, regardless of that fact, today's lore video is going to be on one shot and... You know, um, today's gonna be a probably very unique one because unlike with my Gotchaverse video, this one I have like all the sources and stuff like that, so you'll probably see a lot more gameplay as opposed to just screenshots of my Gotcha video. So yeah, with that being said, now we're gonna get introduced to the world of one shot and pretty much talk about this lore as we speak. Before the existence of One Shot, there was a mysterious world dubbed the Old World by Cedric. This reality, originally inhabited by the author Rue, Proto, and the aforementioned Cedric, was basically the previous world. Everything that existed prior to One Shot is considered the Old World. Within this Old World, there was an object called the Sun, a light bulb like object that maintained the stability of the entire reality. It was shattered by the original Messiah, and this object basically caused the entire erasure of the Old World. But before this could happen, the author was able to preserve aspects of it through data, and with this he created the World Machine, also known as the Entity, who would become the very foundation of the world itself. All things would be fine until the World Machine began to gradually deteriorate due to becoming purely sentient in nature. With it gaining full will, it began erasing everything, including itself. The author tried to prevent this but couldn't. This in turn basically led him to leaving the world itself. Now, through what means, we don't know, but basically he left the world to the next messiah itself. And with that, this is where we begin with Nico himself. We start with a mysterious character named Nico. Waking up from his slumber in some unknown residence, Nico explores this mysterious location and then comes into contact with a being who dubbed himself the Entity. Through the Entity, we learn that us, the player, is fated to guide Nico to his original home and that everything we do will have a fundamental effect on Nico himself. After hearing the door unlock itself, Nico travels to the source of the sound and through this, Nico comes into contact with the sun, which is the current iteration of the last sun that pretty much destroyed the last world itself. Nico exits the mysterious residence and through this, he basically explores the barrens. After having explored this luminous wasteland, he comes into contact with the prophet bot. Through the prophet bot, both the player and Nico are informed that Nico himself is the messiah of the world, who is destined to reunite the sun with the tower, which will restore the world from its current age of darkness. Once again exploring the barrens, Nico runs into a being named Silver, who is a robot created to watch over the lands. As a result of the sun, Silver recognizes Nico as the messiah, and basically she tells him that he needs to place the sun into the tower to maintain the stability of the current world itself. Finding the robot, Nico hitches a ride on the boat and arrives at the docks of Glen. After traversing Glen itself, he runs into Maze, a female plant that requires light, and as requested by Maze herself, Nico decides to leave the sun with her so she can bathe in the light in her final moments. After having been temporarily freed of the sun itself, Nico does some more traveling across Glen and eventually encounters the brother and sister, Alula and Calamus. Returning to the spot where he left the sun, Nico soon finds that not only has Maze left the sun, but also the sun has darkened, but through his contact, Nico finds that when he touches the light, he can basically reunite the sun and basically prevent disaster from happening. Nico in the middle of Glen finds a bed and decides to take a nap. Through this, he has a vision of his original world before he was brought into one shot itself. But through this, also Nico takes the mantle of the sun and begins to head from Glen. Here he arrives at the refuge, the final frontier of the world and also where the tower resides where he has to place the sun and quote unquote save the world. 
Nico explores the refuge where he learns many things about the world, including the nature of Phosphor, which is a byproduct of the world and also a remnant of the old world. While exploring the refuge, Nico spots the various squares that's been appearing across his adventure. According to the lamplighter, this is a common occurrence across one shot. Taking an elevator shaft with the lamplighter, Nico arrives at Refuge City where he travels many locations, including the library, in which he'll return to later, and the slums. Whilst walking through the slums, Nico finds a mysterious alley with a tree. Through this, he meets Rue, who will play an important role in the next video, which, by the way, I decided to separate into parts, who explains that she can't talk with Nico at the moment and that the time isn't right. After the event, Nico arrives at the laboratory where they produce robots and tame them as well. This is where Nico meets Kip, the creator of Silver. Many scientists inform us of the vastly increasing amount of square particles that arrive in one shot itself, which have erased many robots as it is already. Leaving the laboratory, Nico goes back to the library where he meets George, who shows Nico one of the books from the author himself, with many pages being turned out according to George. We reach the finale where we reach the outskirts of the tower. Here, Nico once again encounters the entity who creates a bed and tells him to rest. Nico follows suit and takes a nap. Nico has yet another vision of his original world, and this time around, he has a vision of his field around his normal village. This wakes Nico up and makes him remember what happened prior to his arrival in one shot. Nico traverses the tower, which is a bleak and essentially barren location. Nico loses his connection to the player, and for a short while, he's left alone. Despite this, Nico is shown to be intelligent enough to figure out things on his own, and once again, he reaches the peak and connects with the player. We finally arrive at the peak of the tower. It's here where Nico is informed that he can't do both options, which is to either save the world or go back home, so he must make a choice between the two. With this in mind, Nico basically entrusts the fate of the world with you, which basically gives you two options. You can either save the world by placing the sun in the pedestal, or you can break the sun, shattering reality itself, and travel back home. Should you decide to break the sun, all of reality ceases to exist. However, Nico can go home and leave the world. However, everything you know is gone. Every person that you met is gone. And with that in mind, everything basically ceases to exist. The world of one shot itself is barren, sans the entity who is the only thing that exists. However, should you decide to save the world, you restore the light, however at the expense of Nico himself who vaporizes his physical form and seemingly dies with that. However, the world is saved and Nico achieves his destiny as becoming the messiah. So with that being said, that's pretty much the summary of one shot as a story and also an explanation of how things came to be before the story itself. Apologies if the video so seems underwhelming because really People were asking me whether I included the Solstice route or not, which I didn't. You see, the thing is, the Solstice route itself is so long, it could literally be an own video of itself. In matter of fact, it is going to be its own video of itself. So basically, this is just only part one of a whole entire series, as I plan to cover many one-shot type stuff on my own. However, with that being said, um, yeah, the next video in terms of this series is going to be the Solstice route, which is going to be a pretty lengthy one from what I remember. So yeah, keep out for that. And with that being said, I'm also happy to say that like I'm glad someone finally talked about the one shot lore. Cause like I said, nobody has talked about it yet, so I decided to do it for myself, like I did with the Gotcha verse and stuff. But anyways, yeah, that's pretty much all folks. Super Neo peace the fuck out like usual.